Chattacon. This is Brandy Bolgio Hendren, your Toastmistress. I am here with authors Casey Azell and Marisa Wolf, getting their take on ways to preserve not only your creativity, but perhaps your sanity when the world is falling apart. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe, maybe a partial part a little, of it. A little sanity. As much as any author has sanity, we're gonna go right. with that. Okay, fair point. Valid. So for those of you who might not know these two ladies, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Marisa, why don't you start? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Marisa Wolf. I am uh, three years in to being a published author and for 37 years in to considering myself a writer. Um, so <laughs> I uh, write science fiction and fantasy um, and so far have co-authored novels with the fabulous Casey Ezell, who you might recognize from this call right now. Um, and also Mark Wandry, uh, who's the creator of the Four Horsemen universe. And then I have about 15 short stories. It might be 20. I don't know. I have a lot um, scattered across publishing houses and anthologies and um, am working on my next round of projects. Awesome. Casey? Hi, I'm Casey Ezell. Um, I write science fiction and fantasy and um, a little bit of horror, a little bit of romance. I like to describe myself as genre fluid because um, basically I'm all over the place and can't, can't, pick, a, <laughs> can't pick a genre to stick to. <laughs> um, right, but um, I have been writing professionally since 2010 um, with some, you know, gaps here and there. Um, and uh, I... Um, co-write with Marisa and Mark Wandry as well, um, as well as Griffin Barber, um, John Ringo and Chris Smith. And um, just, I do a lot of co-writing. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and I'm really, I'm really excited to talk about this because this, um, this is a topic that I've become fairly passionate about in the last year as I try to figure out my own sort of like resiliency habits and self-care and, you know, try to still keep the words coming because, you know, mama likes to get paid, so. Mm. <laughs> that <is good. laughs> That's right, that's right. <laughs> so in talking to, you know, a lot of the authors with people spending more time at home with all of our extracurricular activities, just, you know, the kibosh put on them, no conventions this year, uh, with so many things canceled, and a lot of people actually working from home in their day jobs, it seems like we have one end where authors are just loving it and they get, they're get they getting their word counts in and they're really feeling that, you know, that extra time is helping them. But a lot of people seem to be struggling, um, focusing, having sort of that self-discipline and, you know, that having that feeling of isolation. So for each of you, you know, how's that worked for for y'all's writing. So, I mean, Casey, if you want to start. Sure. Yeah. So, um, it's been, it's been a little of both. Um, and I'm sorry, that's such a wishy-washy answer, but for me, it's, um, you know, as a, as a creative person, um, for better or for worse, sort of the mood of, of the universe and, you know, of my community and, and things like that is really has a lot of influence on, um, my creativity and, and how I um, am, you know, how I'm able to create, how product, how productive I am. Um, and that, you know, I don't think that's uncommon among creative people. I think we're very plugged into our communities and, and sort of the zeitgeist, if you will. Um, and the zeitgeist this past year um, has been one of WTF, you know, <laughs> so much, so much of that going on. And that's, that's yes. been an adjustment for me to, to kind of, um, uh, take in and, 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 you know, and kind of filter out as much, this is just my own personal process, you know, filter out as much negativity as possible and, and kind of drill down to the interesting bits of it in the, you know, the pieces that are, that are sort of worth reflecting in my work and they're there they're there, it's just, you, you, I had to kind of find them, you know. Um, you mentioned, you know, our extracurricular activities being being canceled, uh, particularly the conventions, and that, it's really funny, um, that for me has been particularly difficult. Um, I, I'm the kind of person where I need my tribe, and I, um, my tribe scattered all over 
all over the United States. And so, um, well, and really all over the world. Um, and so when we do get together, you know, at conventions like, um, uh, you know, like Chattacon and, and Liberty Con and Dragon Con, that's where in a lot of ways I, I would use those gatherings as kind of the recharge to my creative batteries. Um, and now I don't have that which is interesting because I wasn't going to have it anyway this year. Um, and I didn't, um, so for those of you who don't know, I'm also active duty military and I'm currently stationed in Japan for three years. And so I knew <laughs> that I wasn't gonna be able to go to conventions for about three years. But what I didn't realize is how hard I was gonna be hit by that. Um, so on the one hand, it's, it's been difficult because I've been missing, you know, missing all my friends and my tribe. But on the other hand, there's a tiny, small, ugly part of me that's like kind of glad that my friends aren't meeting up without me and I'm not being left out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so well, yep. I mean, yep. you know, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. That's <laughs> that 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 part of me exists. Um, well, and but then the, the flip side to that is that the the compensation that everyone has come up with, like doing virtual cons like this, um, you know, doing uh, sort of regular video chats and, um, or even just, you know, just messenger chats um, has really been a lifesaver for me in terms of connecting with my people. Um, and so, you know, kind of coming back to the topic of like, what do you do? How do you do that? I, I think one of, one of the main principles that I learned from this year is that you have to, at least I have to invest the time and energy into creating and maintaining your connections with, you know, whatever that means, whether that means with the people that, you know, you live in your house with, um, or the people in your immediate community that you could see in physical space, or the people that, you know, you connect with um, in virtual space, however, however that goes. We're, humanity's great advantage over, you know, the reason why we're apex predators is that we're creative. Um, and I don't just mean in terms of writing stories and stuff, but we, we can figure out creative solutions to problems. And we really, you know, I think really, intentionally accessing that part of ourselves to figure out how can I meet my needs for connection is is so vital during this time not just for creative people but really for everybody yeah so what about you Marisa who I mean Casey you said it was a wishy-washy answer but like <laughs> one day one day I'm on this side of the spectrum and the other day I am way on the other side and Rarely am I in the middle. Um, it's either super productive, let's knock out my half of a novel in a month, or it's, I haven't done anything but outline short stories for six weeks. Um, now they're all outlined. I've got like seven short stories that are outlined, which is very exciting. Um, <clears throat> but it's really thrown my like, ooh, new shiny thing into strong relief. And sometimes, mm -hmm. ooh, new shiny thing is a new story that I want to outline. And sometimes new shiny thing is oh, we should sell our house and move into an RV and drive across the country. And sometimes new shiny thing is um, something similar. Um, or it's brand new schedule to get myself to write. And then it's a new brand new schedule to get myself to write. And there have been a couple of those. Um, so it's just, it's a lot of, I would say my big lesson from the last year is that I don't respond well to shame, which I always knew, but... Um, <laughs> always shamed myself anyway um and weirdly it didn't work and this last year has sort of watching everybody kind of go through this cycle of like I'm not doing the thing I want to do oh my god I should be doing the thing I want to do oh whatever and whatever it is and like seeing other people start to break out of their shame spirals and realize yeah no that never worked that was never motivating for me um has helped me to uh one be slightly nicer to myself but two uh, that's not true to be kinder to myself because the answer is not be, not be nice because when I'm nice, I don't write for three months. Um, but to be kind and, and instead of saying like you, what the heck, why, why didn't you write again today? It's more like, okay, you didn't write today. What's going to make tomorrow different? Um, and just like getting back to a place of expectations for myself. There's nobody around holding me to any expectations. So can I, can I respond to that real quick, Brandy? No. Absolutely. So, <laughs> well, fine. Hey, no. Hey, come on, bring it. Um, you said something super interesting where you said that um, um, it just kind of turned the light bulb on for me that <clears throat> because I also like new shiny things, see, see earlier comment regarding um, genres. Um, and I think, I think one of the things that, um, that maybe I need to, 
that I would like to explore more in terms of this, like taking care of myself, taking care of my creativity, is this idea of figuring out how, like, what, how do I work? What, like, what motivates me? And if what motivates me is the new shiny, then how do I harness that and make that into, okay, you know, um, cause you mentioned a new schedule to motivate yourself to write. I love new schedules. I have like a bazillion planner, like I have a stack this thick of planner she books <laughs> right above my head on my desk. <laughs> and um, because, you know, new, new shiny calendars and, and pretty, um, you know, pretty stationary and stuff is, is beautiful to me and it's exciting and it's fun for me to learn. So if I can, if I can take that stuff that, you know, magpie instinct, I guess, and, and harness it into a way that helps me make my word count and, um, you know, complete my stories and, and finish stuff, um, you know, then, then it's going to be, it's like working with my, my crazy magpie brain versus mm -hmm. working against it. Like you, like you're talking about in the shame spiral. I think yeah. that's, I think that's a, a, an amazing lesson that you have just articulated for us all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it, it is because whether you're an author or, you know, whatever you're doing, uh, you know, so many people are now, you know, like I am, and I'm lucky enough to be outside some with my work, but not nearly as much with COVID. Yeah. And so we're figuring out how to discipline yourself when you're working physically many times by yourself day after day and everybody's a face on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. If you see somebody. So, I mean, and that's amplified, I would think, you know, for you authors, as you're just making sure that, you know, you're making your work count and getting things done, but how do you have that, you know, whatever your reward system is. So, you know, and so each one of you have talked about some things you've done and some things you want to do. Like if you had to pick one thing that keeps you focused, you know, what would that be? Uh, Marisa, what would that be for you? Just like one thing, knowing that one thing might not work every time, but might be most successful. I mean, if I had to pick one, which, you know, I want all, I want all the things. That's why, who I am as a person. Um, but um, my one thing is honestly having a co-author or an editor of an anthology who I know is waiting on me and who I don't want to let down. Um, so when everything else in my life is just kind of like free flowing and we'll figure it out as we go, um, knowing that my co-author is expecting to see some words for the story to move forward, or I have a, like I have a deadline in two weeks. And so that fully beautiful drafted short story has to be a fully beautiful written short story pretty soon. <laughs> so just keeping that in mind and being like, okay, do I want to be up until three in the morning before it's due, which I have done before? Um, or do I want to send it in a couple days early and just feel amazing? Um, <laughs> so that's my, my one, one no, thing absolutely. that almost always works. What about you, Casey? So yes, all of what Marisa said, but also kind of um, looking at it from a different angle, I find that I am much more able to focus when I invest in self-care in the form of exercise. If I get my workout in and I am, I am consistent with my workout, like right now I ha honestly, <laughs> hashtag truth time, right? Um, I... <laughs> This last weekend, I was really hoping to be super productive and get a lot done, and I didn't. And part of the reason that I think that I didn't is that I, I didn't get up and do my workout every day. Um, but taking that time to invest physically in my, in my physical health, um, I don't know. I don't know what magic it is, but it, you know, I'm, I'm sure some smart science -y people could tell me, but for me, it just... Right. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's part of it, you know, and then, um, but it just, it, it does, it helps me to, helps me to focus, helps me to, you know, sit down and think, okay, this is the thing that I'm working on um, right now. Cause you know, like Marisa said, I have about, I don't know, 17 projects that, that I'm working on. And, you know, all of those, all of those little threads are there in my brain being like, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. But, um, you know, I also have the same deadline in two weeks. And, and so if I'm, if I take the time to go and get sweaty and get hot and then go take a shower and, you know, get clean afterwards, then I'm able to sit down and say, okay, this is the thing that I'm working on. And I can, I can immerse myself in the story better. And I can, um, can really just sort of, uh, put that effort into, the concentrated piece that I need it to go into. 
Yeah. The days that I've been really good at it, I like, I love that you said that. It's when I've either gone for like a really good hike, um, the day after the really good hike, not so much because I'm like, oh God, I'm so sorry. But the day of the really good hike, I am. Yeah. Um, or when I've had like a podcast or a virtual panel or a call with friends and like, I'm just super energized then I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. cool. I'm going to go like, and I just, I'm like, I'll just knock out a couple hundred words. And then, you know, 2000 words later, I'm like, yes, <laughs> I caught mm -hmm. up. Like I did the yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really do think there's something to that. So for me, really what 2020 taught me about my, my process as a writer is, is that I have to, I have to nurture two things. One is the connections that I talked about, which, um, you know, like you said, maybe that means a zoom call. Maybe that means doing a Chattercon panel. <laughs> maybe that means, um, you know, whatever, uh, nurture your connections. And then two, I've got to take care of myself physically. Um, I've got to, um, to, to eat right, which I'm still struggling with. Um, but mm -hmm. I've got to do the exercise. I've, you know, I, I can't just, I really admire, I really admire the people who like, um, like John Ringo's famous for it, right? He'll go in a room and he'll lock himself in a room and he'll like write for three days straight, you know, subsisting on nothing but cigars and, and bourbon. And <laughs> who knows what he's subsisting on? And, comes out, and he comes out with a brilliant novel, right? <laughs> um, I can't do that. I have to be much more deliberate and I have to, I have to take care of, of my body as well. So self-care and connection, I think, um, you know, if, if we had to distill it down to two things, those would be, those would be the things I'd pick. I did no, get to I write. Think... Oh, no, good. No, I think that's perfect. What did you get to write, Risa? Uh, what, no, you, you know this. I wrote two entire short stories on a flight to Hawaii and then on a day next to the pool in Hawaii, um, next to Casey, actually. <laughs> um, and, I and we were all very jealous of you. I mean, you, you know, that. yes, I was, I, but I was so excited. Like I really, I knocked it out. You um, did, you so did. Go figure, trapped in a plane, check. Um, don't especially want to do that right now, but you know, um, and on a beach. I could be trapped by the pool in Hawaii though. That, I would be, I would okay, be okay with, with that. that. Yeah, that <laughs> every day. That would be okay. And I don't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> So people say that this year, and I, and I definitely agree with this, um, you know, it's something like we would see in the first few pages of a science fiction novel. Uh, most of the time, a very scary post-apocalyptic, perhaps, uh, science fiction novel, but something we definitely have not expected. So have each of you or either of you found that it's affected your writing at all, or, you know, maybe affected sort of how you think about things as you're writing a little bit I so interestingly enough right before let's see I turned in a story uh right at the new year right as 2020 was starting right you know January of 2020 and so that was obviously before the whole pandemic you know w became a pandemic when it was just sort of um you know we were so worried about brush fires in Australia and and, oh, and things like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, remember that? That seems like a really long time ago. <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> so, um, but <clears throat> in that story, um, it was uh, it, it was kind of a, a cute little YA, um, sweet romancy sort of thing. Um, but in that story, the main characters are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but they're, they're teenagers. And there was a concept that, that kind of came to me while I was writing the story that um, you know, the end of the world, um, eschatons, which um, is what people usually mean to say when they say apocalypse, um, that they happen all the time. Mm -hmm. Any time that the world changes as we know it, that's the end of the world as it was. And so this for me is, you know, this for me is just, just sort of another thing like that. Like, yeah, the world is coming to an end, but it's okay because there's going to be something after it. You know, it's just coming to an end as we know it. The part that is somewhat anxiety making about that is, well, we don't really know what it's gonna look like after, but then you never do, right? Um, and I, I'm a huge history fan and my love of history and the stories from our past really does inform my work. Um, and I keep thinking about like the great war, the, the first world war, the world as particularly from the European perspective, the world as Europe knew it in 1913 mm. was, completely different than the world in 1916. 
and and then even worse different in 1920 you know so just the the four years of of 1914 to 1918 that period of time so changed everything that society was different gender roles were different um governments were different you know it 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 really it's interesting to me to from an observer perspective to watch how kind of how this particular eschaton this particular end of the world is is sort of proceeding and and try to predict how is it going to look on the other side you know what's what's the world going to look like in 2024 um is it going to look more or less like it did in 2018 i don't know but it's interesting to think about I am. Um, I can tell you that I don't want to read or write any pandemic novels right now. <laughs> yeah, um, no. <laughs> so that's that's a thing that changed um, <laughs> because I used to be all about them, um, especially when they led to zombie apocalypses. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm taking a pause on those. Um, one one like kind of amusing thing. Um, I had a short story that was basically like a locked room science fiction situation, um, but. I got my engineer stuck in a in a like a compartment for a good chunk of the story because I was in quarantine, um, and it was. I feel like I really got across what it felt like to be stuck in a small yeah. compartment for a long period of time because yeah. I was feeling it. Um, but I think for real, it's more like my my whole drive in my life is to remain optimistic, like to have faith that there will be a bright side, there will be a good change, there will be something. Um, and I, I felt real tested um, over the last year, but I think that plays out in my writing too, is that there is hope at the end of any story. Like I cannot write a full tragedy even when I kill off my main character, which I've done a few times. Um, but I think it is still like, that still remains like a real focus for me of like keeping that sense of like, something good, even if it's awful in the meantime, something good will come of it. Um, and that's when I just said something else and it's gone, but we'll find it again through our conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a healthy focus. I, I think that, you know, even with all of the changes, life goes on. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even though we feel like so many people have felt like, Hey, they've got, their life is on pause at the end of the day, there are certain things that if they are important enough, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we find a way, you know, we are right. creative as a species, you know, right. yeah. we, we might not get married in that big setting. We might get married in a beautiful old Aunt Elm, Elm house. Yeah. We might, yeah. you know, we might see our parents and our older people in the yard or through a window, but you know, as much as we can, we still see them. I mean, we right. are, yeah. we are creative and we are resilient as a species. And I mean, yeah. that's, you know, to me, that's, that's where the hope is that we yeah. will find a way even, right. you know, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not immediate, you know, we can take a, but we can take just a crappy situation and we will, you know, we can, if we choose to, in many ways, figure out how to salvage it. Yeah. So some of it's it's interesting that you mentioned like the the media that you're consuming right now, Marisa, because I, I I was just thinking about that like okay what am I what am I attracted to right now what am I reading what am I watching and stuff, and I've got I've got two sort of themes that I've noticed that I'm I'm really vibing with right now, mm -hmm. one is uh, uh, Regency romances <laughs> because again everything always works out and um, you know. We always end with a beautiful wedding and people are connecting and stuff. But the, the second one is the 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 humanity F yeah stories, the, nice. the stories of like how badass we are as a species. Mm -hmm. Um and, and I think it has to do with what you're saying, Brandy, that like, you know, we we are we are apex predators for a reason, right? We are at the top of of the food chain here on our planet because we are have the ability to adapt and overcome and work together and and emote and you know connect um and all of those things make us who and what we are and so those are the things that are going to get us through this particular difficulty and we are we are not just able to get through this difficulty but we've been designed by yeah. our own history to be able to get through difficulties we've just had it pretty easy up until up until now within the, the span of my lifetime at least. Mm -hmm. um, 
And when I say we, I kind of mean me because I recognize that not everybody has it easy. You know? okay. And yeah. so, and, and that leads me kind of to another thing that, um, that I've noticed has been helpful for my own creativity. And that is being grateful, being, you know, taking the time to intentionally think about and be grateful for all of the things that I have and all of the, the advantages that, that I've been given and all the blessings that I have received, you know, um, I, I have the privilege right now of living in, in Japan, which is a wonderful country, um, with, you know, an amazing culture. And so I get to do experiencing and learning and stuff that would be closed to most Americans right now, simply because I'm, I'm here because of my job. Um, and that is a huge, there's a huge privilege and a huge blessing. And I, I recognize that and I'm, um, I'm very grateful for it. Um, you know, I'm grateful that I have a supportive family that lets me lock myself in a room. And <laughs> that's probably something we should talk about too. Like, how do you do word counts when you're, you know, have kids at home trying to like, um, you know, trying to do homeschool or take up your time and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I have, I have an amazing supportive partner and my husband. Um, I'm very grateful that, you know, because we're here on the base, on the Air Force base in a, in a controlled environment, um, we haven't really had to deal with a lot of the, the homeschooling issues this school year. Um, you know, both of my kids are still able to go to in-person school, which I'm so grateful for because it's better not just for me, but also for them, um, you know, and, and really, really focusing on that gratitude and, and recognizing that, you know, I do, I have a lot of, I have a lot to be grateful for. And, and um, I, I think that that's particularly important. Yeah. I had a gratitude journal for a good eight months um, that I still have, but I'm not doing every single night because I feel like I'm more kind of centered in that. Um, and I think alongside that gratitude has been a lot of self-reflection mm -hmm. um, and that I've realized is showing up in one of the stories that I'm actively writing right now, even though I think it has the latest due date. So we're going to have to figure that out. But um, just about this, like there is, there has always been in me a uh, distrust of people with more power than me um, for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, probably because I love those like rebellion tales, Star Wars, you might've heard of it. Um, so th they exist, right? Um, but I, I think over this last year, especially I've seen so many really smart people just by hook, line and sinker into whatever the story of the day is. And I've done it. Um, and I consider myself a pretty smart, critical thinker. Um, but I, over the last year, I've really seen myself do it too because I've gotten so frustrated when people have done it. And I'm like, well, am I like amazing at this all the time? Um, it's just having to be really reflective on like, where am I buying into a party line or a storyline or whatever in real life? And then how do I think that would play out in some of these stories that I'm writing of the underdog or the, the battle or the whatever? And how can I make that more realistic and less likely to be luxury um because they do not like to be preached to um and that's the last thing I want to show up in my writing um not to say that writing isn't political because it is um but I don't like it to be preachy you know like I like yeah. it to be oh, absolutely it is what it is so um anyway I got a little off there but this like self-reflection piece has been really important for me over this last year too yeah for sure <laughs> I think it, it's, you know, I think it's been important for so many people and figuring out, you know, with a lot of the things we just, sometimes we just do because we do, we've always done that. Yeah. So now that that's all been, you know, all that sort of extracurricular, much of the extracurricular has been taken away. What are the things that we find we just did out of habit and what are the things that matter to us and why? I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I know that with friends, with colleagues, that, that really comes up a lot. Um, people finding actually new hobbies, you know, that they never even had thought of. Yeah. So, or getting back advice? to old ones that they liked absolutely. when they were little. Yes, absolutely. Just getting back to the things that you love. Yeah. yeah. So, what advice would you each give to a new writer as they begin their journey? Um, you know, definitely this would be starting in uncertain times. Um, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of young people getting into writing, uh, as they have this time have really had a different experience in, mm -hmm. you know, some of their formative years, perhaps, Yeah. you know, Casey and I have each, you know, have a senior this year 
and this has definitely been a uh, a different year for those for those young ladies. So, you know, if you had one piece of advice to give to them, what would it be, Casey? Case. Well, I don't know. I don't know if this counts as advice, but I would point out, and I and I do point this out to to my daughter, to my senior, that you know, uncertain times. The the good thing about uncertain times is that there's they're rife with opportunity, opportunity mm -hmm. that you would never even imagine. Um, and as long as you, as long as you're in a, in a position to take advantage of that opportunity, like you can really, you can really go far. And, and what I mean by being in a position to take advantage of that opportunity is kind of all the things that we've been talking about, right? Like take care of yourself, know who you are, be, um, you know, be your own advocate, whether it be in terms of carving out time to do your workouts or making sure that you're eating right or whatever, um, and making sure that you're you're connecting with the people that that uplift you and recharge you, um, and that you're not wasting your energy on things that drag you down. And for me, the classic example, I love social media, um, but you know because that's how that's how I connect with my tribe. But the classic example is doom scrolling on on Facebook, oh. you know, I like I, I catch myself yes. as I go to bed, you know, I pick up that phone and I start scrolling and then it's just like unhappy thing, unhappy thing, unhappy mm -hmm. thing, unhappy thing. And I've had to consciously stop myself and put the phone away or, you know, change it and read something uplifting or, you know, do a meditation or something mm -hmm. because it's, it is, it's, it's damaging um, to, you know, to my mental and emotional health just to, now that's not to say that I don't need that connection because I do and not everything on social media is horrible. Um, but there are times when it's just, it seems like an inundation and those are the times that you have to say, okay, stop. I don't need to take this emotional burden on right now. People are posting it out there because you know it, it lifts their emotional burden and bully for them, but that doesn't mean that I'm obligated to take it on. I can put it away and I can do something else and I can focus on what is good in my life um, and, and protect myself in that manner. I kind of lost my train of thought, <laughs> kind of went off into no, the weeds, that's, but that's take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, so that's, so that's really, really what my, my piece of advice is, is put your, make yourself into a position where you're able to take advantage of the uncertainty and the, and the opportunities that come along with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and specifically for writers, it's still a great time. You know, indie publishing is still on the rise. Um, and, uh, you know, the big five are, are starting to kind of open up and look into, um, you know, alternate avenues of bringing on new writers and, you know, finding new voices and stuff like that. So it's, it's a great time to start a writing career. You just got to, uh, got to understand that just because it's a great time, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy, but take care of yourself, make yourself able to, to really, you know, take advantage of those opportunities and, and go get some, you know, it's out there, go get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say all of that with the addition of like, just because it's a great time, it might not be a great time for you. And that's yep. okay. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're going to lose your window. Um, so I, uh, I got laid off last summer and for the first time since I was 15, wasn't working like crazy hours every day. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get so much writing done. I am going to just I'm going to knock out like four novels and I'll, it, I did <laughs> listener. I did not. Um, like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the right time for me. Um, and rest is important and being where you are supposed to be is important. Um, so the biggest piece of advice I would give is do not feel obligated either way. Don't feel obligated that now is your time to write your magnum opus because you're out of work or there are new opportunities or there are whatever, but also don't feel obligated to put it on the shelf. Like do what it is that you are called to do at the moment that you are called to do it. Um, and now don't, don't take that too far. Like I do, which is like, oh, it's Tuesday and I don't feel called to write. So I'm not going to write at all. Um, that's a little too far sometimes. Um, uh, but like, really it is like, just what is right for you in your situation. This is not yeah. the only time you have. And it's not a terrible time if this is the time you have. So, right. I don't know. Well, and and a lot of that I think goes back to what what you said earlier about rest is rest is so important. And this is something that I specifically have a hard time with. Like, 
um, you know, the other day, the other day I came home from church and I passed the F out. Like, <laughs> I slept until about, I don't know, like three 30, um, it's just all day. And I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, I have wasted this entire day. And I really had to like stop myself and reframe that and be like, hold up. Obviously I was tired. And if I'm tired, maybe I need the rest. And so I did that. I took that rest. And maybe that was a good thing. And now I can focus on my afternoon and my evening. And um, it just, you know, like you said, it was, you gotta, right. You've gotta be, you've gotta be in, in tune with what you need and, and take care of yourself. And if, if you need to rest, rest is valid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I think that's absolutely correct because if you're, if your body's not healthy, if your mind's not healthy, you're not emotionally healthy, you know, if you don't have those three things, something's going to give, right? I mean, they're yeah. so intertwined. Um, no, yeah. so hopefully, I mean, I have enjoyed this time together very <laughs> much. So, you know, these are two of the ladies in, in sort of my inner tribe that I talk to, you know, every day, almost in some former form fashion even yeah. across the world so we are we are definitely blessed that uh you know we have that ability even through the pandemic and everything else that's going on um but i think a lot of people are going to find this helpful so thank you Chattacon, for Thanks, giving us yes, giving, us, giving us the time here so all right Chattacon, please make sure you check out these ladies books they can be found at caseyazell.net and marisawolf.net so you know you can go on amazon if you need to but buy them all All (laughs) that's what i would love you forever if you did (laughs) contribute to my self-care yes so thank you ladies very much and you know next panel chatacon yeah thanks